Hello everyone and welcome back to your daily government and financial news update. In today's video, we'll be discussing what President Joe Biden recently said about inflation and why Americans need a change of perspective. We also go over how much of an increase Americans on Social Security benefits should be seeing in 2023, why one piece of legislation that may help increase them even more, and finally, we discuss updates in the stock market and Bitcoin. Now, as always, I am definitely interested in hearing your thoughts on everything, and I wanted to thank everyone for giving my videos likes and sharing them, as that certainly helps push these videos out to other people like you. Okay, so over the weekend, President Joe Biden was interviewed on 60 Minutes where he insisted that Americans should start putting inflation in perspective. When asked what he could do better or faster, he said that even though 8.3% isn't good news, inflation has been basically even and hasn't spiked over the last several months. Of course, most Americans still say by a 2 to 1 margin that Biden's economic policies have hurt more than what they have helped. Uh, of course, what hovers all over all of this, though, is, again, the economy. You saw the Republican advantage on the economy. And when you ask this question about Joe Biden, the effect his policies have had in the economy, a two to one margin, folks saying it's more hurt the economy than help the economy. And even though many people have been receiving raises at work over the last year, the 8 to 9% inflation has made it so whenever you figure for net wages, they've actually been receiving less money than what they had the year before. So if someone earned a 5% raise at work going from earning $40,000 to $42,000 per year, the fact that inflation has actually been at 8 to 9% over the last year makes those $42,000 worth less money than the $40,000 that they were earning in the year prior. And even though Americans have been seeing some relief in gas prices over the last few months, Groceries are one ticket item that really just don't seem to budge, which makes it tough for many people to get by. So I have three kids and you know, everything is, since everything is really expensive. Shoppers like Romney Sano say the past few months haven't been easy. Sano says he got a modest raise from his job late last year, but it hasn't come close to keeping up with the rising costs of necessities like groceries. I used to buy five of those for $1, now $2 for the same thing and it's smaller. According to experts nationwide, groceries went up by 13.5% since last year. Electricity up 15.8%. Car repairs up 9.1%. Rent up 6.7%. The bottom line, the average household is spending nearly $460 more a month to buy the same goods and services as last year. Meanwhile, over the last several months, Social Security beneficiaries haven't seen a single raise since the month of January, since their fixed income checks are only adjusted once starting in the month of January each and every year. Now, next month, those receiving Social Security will find out how much of an increase they'll be receiving next year, but again, that won't be for a few more months, so they won't actually see that increase until January of 2023. Now, in August, the Senior Citizens League did predict the increase would be at 9.6%, which would have been the highest increase in 40 years, but this month, they actually lowered their prediction all the way down to 8.7%. This would be an average increase of anywhere between $1,700 to $1,800 per year. They said that one of the biggest issues in using the CPIW to calculate the Social Security cost of living adjustment is the fact that it does not track the spending of retired households age 62 and older, and it gives greater weight to gasoline and transportation costs. They also say that the huge drop in gas prices played an outsized role in why the cost of living adjustment dropped from 9.6 to 8.7 percent. Considering that the Biden administration temporarily lifted the 18.3 cent per gallon federal tax on gasoline for 90 days, that played a really big part in the drop in gas prices. But unfortunately, that tax will be ending in September, which just so happens to be the same third quarter period that is used to calculate the adjustment. Also, they write that across the board, retired and disabled Social Security recipients spent a bigger portion of their incomes on health care costs, housing, and food but less on gasoline, just like I mentioned. And over the last 12 months, they rank food as their fastest growing expenditure with housing and transportation coming in at second and third. Of course, even though an 8.7% increase doesn't seem nearly as appealing as 9.6%, it would still be the biggest jump in 40 years. Now, one bill that would actually change the way the cost of living adjustment is calculated to better reflect what most seniors pay for is the Social Security 2100 Act, which currently actually has over 200 co-sponsors. 
But even though the bill has so much support in Congress, it would likely pass at least in the House. The Senate might be a little bit questionable, but this bill for sure would definitely pass in the House. One person who hasn't signed into the bill is the House Speaker herself, Nancy Pelosi. Now, many speculate that one of Pelosi's policy aides, Wendell Primus, is the one holding her back from getting on board with the bill, as his philosophy is more so that Democrats should only fight to maintain the current social safety net, rather than do anything to actually expand what the current benefits are. Now, John Larson, the creator of the bill, made an argument that Social Security is one of the top programs responsible for reducing childhood poverty, second only to the child tax credits. But Primus, again, one of Pelosi's aides, said that we only currently have a limited amount of resources and we have to make difficult decisions at times. Considering that around 25% of elderly Americans live in households that rely on Social Security benefits for at least 90% of their income, and around 50% of all Americans have no retirement account at all, something really needs to get done. Now, starting today, the Federal Reserve will start their first day of their two-day meetings, where it is expected that tomorrow they'll announce another 0.75 percentage point increase. This would be the fifth interest rate hike this year, where the Fed has hoped it would lower inflation. And even though we haven't really seen any great results so far, at the very least, inflation hasn't gone up at the same pace it was earlier. And so what this rate hike will mean is that if you currently have a credit card with a balance that you're paying interest on on a month to month basis, your interest rate will unfortunately see an increase, making it so that you'll have to pay even more money in this interest. So if you can at this time, make sure to pay off your credit card each and every month just to avoid paying any of this extra interest because according to a new analysis by the Wallet Hub, consumers will end up spending an additional $5.3 billion if another 75 basis point hike is implemented. Also, things like home mortgages, auto loans, and student loans will increase as well. Now, on the good side of things, we should begin to see much higher interest rates in savings accounts. So, for example, VO Bank is currently offering 2.30% APY, which is much higher than where it was just several months ago, where rates were still below 1%. And even though a 2.30% savings rate is really good, like I just mentioned, unfortunately, people would still be losing money considering that inflation is still at 8 to 9% and their savings would be just at 2%. So they'd be losing around 6% per year at that current pace. So just something to keep in mind there, but let's hope that at the very least, the rate hike does what it's supposed to do by lowering inflation and also hope that it doesn't hurt the economy too much in the meantime, as it definitely has the potential to. Now, one area where we may see an immediate impact of the rate hikes is the stock market, where typically when rates increase, the prices of stocks go down. So for example, when investors saw the bad news in the latest inflation report, it was speculated that there would be another huge rate hike announced this year, so we saw a large sell-off. Yesterday though, one day ahead of the meeting for the Federal Reserve, stocks were in the green with the S&P 500 up by 0.69%, the Dow Jones up by 0.64%, and the Nasdaq was actually in the red by 0.46%. Features for today so far are actually down low with Dow features down by 0.29%, S&P 500 features in the red by 0.41%, and Nasdaq features also in the red down by 0.58%. Over the last day, Bitcoin has actually surged up quite a bit though, up by 0.41%. This after falling into the low 18,000s early on Monday morning. Now, even though the market seems to look just a little bit shaky right now, you can actually get it at much better prices than just a few months ago. So with that said, it definitely wouldn't be a bad time to start investing or if you've already started investing, to continue dollar cost averaging down and in. So if you would like to receive up to 12 free stocks and $5 worth of Bitcoin in the comment section below, I will leave a link where you can receive just that from my partner in Webull. And even if you don't feel like investing at this time for whatever reason, what you can always do is once you receive the free stocks, you can just sell them for what they're worth and then transfer that money right back to your bank account. So in total, you should be receiving a value of at least $50 or more. Some people have actually received over $3,000 in the past, which this money will be taxable, but still you can think of that as just some free extra money with just a few minutes of work. But on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. If you enjoyed the content in today's video and you would like to see more like it, I would greatly appreciate it if you would give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and make sure to ring the notification bell. That way you won't be missing any of my future videos. 
And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.